Hey everybody, it's Mike and Denise. Look at all the leaves. This is the last time we're gonna see these leaves. The last time we're gonna be here in the DC area. Look at all these leaves all over the path. You'll see our trailer, our events trailer. We're getting ready to head south. And remember, I have a book called Live to 150 at liveto150.org. Teach you all the secret longevity habits, including daily vigorous aerobic exercise, which we're getting right now. And it's gonna get dark when we're doing this. It'll be so much lighter further south when we get down there. So we cannot wait, right? Yeah. To get down there. But there won't be any colored foliage like you see here. But this is the last of it anyway. This is like the last couple of days, beginning of November. There's our events trailer down there, see it? That's what's going with us. You may see that in future videos. We have another YouTube channel called adigitalnomad.net. You can check us out on there if you wanna see us towing that thing. It takes a while, we can only drive 100 miles between charging stops. Okay, today we're going to Harvard University to find out about fat. There's all kinds of misconceptions about fat, so why don't we just go to Harvard University, and I know that they're not any kind of beacon of plant-based anything, but maybe they know something about fat. And then all we need to know about is in general, fat, there's fats that are from animals, fats that are from plants, but they usually divide them up into three categories, like what I call regular fats, saturated fats, and trans fats. So Denise is gonna read us the title and start telling us what this article says. The truth about fat. The good, the bad, and the in-between. <laughs> uh, avoid trans fats, limit the saturated fats, and replace essential poly, uh, polyunsaturated fats. Replace? Uh, replace uh, with. Oh, yeah. replace with. Okay, so that's basically your, your cheat sheet right there. Yeah. If you want to know it, okay? <laughs> yeah. The rest of it is all going to be an explanation of why that is the case. A lot of people have said, oh, you know, I think there's all agreement on trans fats that's all bad. They're like human made. And saturated fats, there's been some, some people say, oh, that was debunked. You don't have to avoid saturated fats. But there's a lot of saturated fats in like coconut and oils and things like that. It's really, really bad. Uh, even plants, you know, have this stuff. So. We know someone who has episodes whenever she eats saturated fat. We do? Yeah. <laughs> That doctor oh yeah that that's right saturated fats i wonder if they say it in here are definitely related to ms yeah. so the solving L ms actually mm -hmm. fixing ms a cure for ms is actually in my opinion related to saturated fat i think it's a hypersensitivity to saturated fat it's the disease expression in your body when you eat saturated fat and those people just need us to lay off of it completely and um you know this doctor that we had at one of our events in naples veg fest from pcrm she um, Stansic, Dr. Stansick, yeah. she reversed her MS. She's in the movie Coach Loop. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. And it's all about eliminating saturated fat from your diet. That's it. It's as simple as that. No drugs, no pharmaceuticals. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Why are trans fats bad for you? Polyunsaturated and monosaturated fats good for you, and saturated fats somewhere in between. For years, fat was a four-letter word. Four-letter <laughs> word? I know it only has three letters. We were urged to banish it from our diets whenever possible. It's yeah. all fat, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Like fat, fat. In the 90s thing. Well, there is a saying, the fat you eat is the fat you wear, and that is true. You cannot, this article doesn't address it, but you cannot eat a too high of a percentage of calories from fat of any kind of fat. Otherwise, you're going to gain weight. You can, you'll never be able to lose it. And because you'll be wearing the fat and you'll be also having all kinds of circulatory system issues, including type 2 diabetes. Yeah, we try to keep it below 10%. On a bad day, we may have 14%. If we yeah, and or something. so for plants, that's <laughs> eating mostly whole plants, avoiding too many nut seeds and avocados and coconut yeah. and other things with a high saturated fat, which I'll get into. Well, but the only way to keep it consistently under 20% is to avoid animal products. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So we switched to low fat foods in the 90s, but the shift didn't make us healthier, probably because we cut back on healthy fats as well as harmful ones. You may wonder, isn't fat bad for you? But your body needs some fat from food. It's a major source of energy. It, it helps you absorb some vitamins and minerals. Fat is needed to build cell membranes, the vital exterior of each cell, and sheaths the surrounding nerves. 
It is essential for blood clotting, muscle movement, and inflammation. <laughs> for long it's time, essential. Wait, 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 it's essential for inflammation. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's a bad thing. All right. Now remember, Harvard is—they're smart people, right? Apparently, but they're not a plant-based institution. So there's a lot that they don't know, but hopefully they know a thing or two about fat. That's why we're going to read this article. Yeah. For long-term health, some fats are better than others. The good fats include monounsaturated uh, mono and polyunsaturated fats. Bad so ones include yeah. industrial-made trans fats. Industrial. <laughs> industrial. Well, I, what else is industrial-made? Oil. Oil, oil is, is yeah. industrial-made. All oil is industrial-made. Yeah, all those monounsaturated fats arrive in food. I don't think you can produce them. <laughs> yeah, so this, you know, like I said, Harvard's not plant-based, so they're not going to tell you this, but if they're going to go ahead and use a, like a, um, I don't know, a, an emotional term like that, they should mm -hmm. also use it to describe all oil. Saturated fats fall somewhere in the middle. All fats have a similar chemical structure, a chain of carbon atoms bonded to hydrogen atoms. What makes one fat different from the other is the length and shape of the carbon chain and the number of hydrogen atoms connected to the carbon atoms. I feel like I'm in chemistry class. <laughs> yeah. Seeming, seemingly slight differences in structure translate into crucial differences in form and function. Bad trans fats. The worst type of dietary fat is the kind known as trans fat. It is a byproduct of a process called hydrogenation and is used to turn healthy oils into solids. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> healthy oils. Okay, they're, they're right, you can There's tell the bias in this article. Oil. Okay, <laughs> oil is the the definition of the ultimate junk food. All right, yeah. all oil. So that's the process turning them into solids and to prevent them from becoming rancid. Trans fats have no known health benefits and uh, there is no safe level of consumption. Well, they make Oreos taste good, right? Uh, yeah. That's why you <laughs> buy the Hydrox cookies instead of Oreos. <laughs> well, they have it all. All that stuff is, that's what, it's like a crispy fried, whatever. It's all trans fats. Hydrox doesn't have any trans fats. It doesn't? They were a spin off of the Oreo. I thought, I thought, they, thought they, they were cheap. Business, yeah, I thought they were cheap Oreos. <laughs> This is, we didn't know anything when we were growing up. So I'm just telling you what we were doing when we were growing up. Don't do this. Don't eat that stuff. I didn't know this. Trans fats have officially been banned in the United States. In the United States? Yeah. Well, I know that they were banned. This is going back decades. A couple, like 20 years ago, New York City banned them. Montgomery County, Maryland banned them. But everywhere they're banned? Everywhere? Uh, so they're not in Oreos I thought, anymore? I thought the articles kind of say about that. We're okay. Well, if anybody knows, let, me, let us know in the comments, please. Because I just haven't caught up with that. I just know to avoid them and I always have. So Early in I the do. 20th century, trans fats were found mainly in solid margarines and vegetable shortening. As food makers learned new ways to use partially hyd hydrogenated vegetable oils, they began appearing in everything from commercial cookies to pastries to fast food french fries. Trans fats are now banned in the U.S. and many other huh. countries. Okay. Eating foods rich in trans fats increases the amount of harmful LDL cholesterol in the bloodstream and reduces the amount of beneficial HDL cholesterol. Trans fats create inflammation, which is linked to heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and other chronic conditions. They contribute to insulin resistance, which increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Even small amounts of trans fats can harm health. For every 2% of calories from trans fat consumed daily, the risk of heart disease is raised by 23%. Holy crap. In between saturated fats, saturated fats are common in the American diet. They are solid at room temperature. Think cool bacon grease. <laughs> but what is saturated fat? Common sources of saturated fat include red meat, whole milk, and other whole milk dairy Animal products, foods. animal products? Yeah, cheese. Animal products? Coconut oil. Oh, so that's it. Coconut. Yeah, don't think coconut's a healthy food. The water is, is good inside the coconut, but yeah, that's about it. That's it. Many commercially prepared baked goods and other foods. The word saturated here refers to the number of hydrogen atoms surrounded, surrounding each carbon atom. Hershey's has saturated fat in it, by the way. Hershey's what? Hershey's chocolate bars. Oh, chocolate. They're, they're okay. not liquid gold. <laughs> they're a liquid heart attack. 
the chain of carbon atoms holds as many as as many hydrogen atoms as possible. It's saturated with hydrogens. Is saturated fat bad for you? A diet rich in saturated fats can drive up total cholesterol and tip the balance more toward harmful LDL cholesterol, which prompts blockages to form in arteries in the heart and elsewhere in the body. This Thank doesn't you, sound good. Your brain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this doesn't sound good at all. For that reason, most nutrition experts recommend limiting saturated fat to under 10% of calories per day. Who ever even calculates that? I mean, we, we've talked about well, we've talked about fat and percentage of calories from fat, but not not uh, percentage of fat calories from saturated yeah, fat. Kind of altogether. Yeah, we've never even done the calculations. Is what I'm saying. So. A handful of recent reports have muddied the link between saturated fat and heart disease. One meta-analysis of 21 studies said that there was not enough evidence to conclude that saturated fat increases the risk of heart disease, but that replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat may indeed risk reduce risk of heart disease. The two other major studies narrowed the prescription slightly concluding that replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats like vegetable oils or high fiber carbohydrates is the best bet for reducing risk of heart disease. But replacing saturated fat with highly processed carbohydrates could do the opposite. Right, there's, there's two different types of carbohydrates of carbs. There's whole plant carbs, and then there's processed food carbs. Don't let anybody tell you that they're the same thing and you just gotta avoid carbs because that's not right. But you do need to avoid processed carbs. Yeah. So if you're gonna eat a coconut and your other choices, some processed carbs or saturated fat, you're better off eating the coconut? <laughs> mm, right. You're better off eating another whole carb that's not coconut. Yeah. Good, it's a plant. Good monosaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Good fats come mainly from vegetables, nuts, seeds, and fish. <laughs> we don't recommend fish. No, fish. fish is a vegetable? Uh, 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 vegetables, nuts, nuts seeds. Uh, nuts so seeds. It, let's say they come from plants. How about we say that? Okay, yeah. We got we to gotta correct Harvard. They don't know what they're talking about there. They differ from saturated fats by having fewer hydrogen atoms bonded to their carbon chains. Healthy fats are liquid at room temperature, not solid. They are... There are two broad categories of beneficial fats, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated So when fats. they say room temperature, they're talking about, what, like 75 degrees? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be liquid at 75 degrees, which means it'll probably be liquid in your body too, so it'll flow. I'm just trying, just for the non-scientific, I'm trying to explain this. But if, mm -hmm. it's, if it's solid at room temperature, there's a good chance that it's not going to move much at 98.6 or whatever you are. It's gonna move, but it's not gonna move much. And that's the problem. If you, if you understand that concept, you understand why you don't want saturated fat. Yeah. Monounsaturated fats. When did you dip your bread in olive? When you dip your bread in olive oil at an Italian restaurant, you're getting mostly monounsaturated fat. Monounsaturated. Yeah. Well, that's if it's actually real olive oil oh, and not something else. Who knows what it is? How do you know? Has anyone ever tested the? Anyone ever tested any oil you've received? We have no idea. You're just taking their word. And there's been plenty of articles on fake olive oils out there. By the way, I'm not just being some kind of a, a I don't know conspiracy theorist or whatever. Monounsaturated fats have a single carbon to carbon double bond. The result is that it has two fewer hydrogen atoms than a saturated fat and they bend at the double bond. <laughs> the structure keeps monounsaturated fats liquid at room temperature. Well, again, th th this comes back to the idea that you want it to flow freely in your body, right? I mean, you don't want any, you, you, you don't want too much fat at all, low percentage of calories of fat, but the fat that you want, the fat that you eat. You want it to still be satiating to your taste buds because that's what really wants the fat. It's just your taste buds, nothing else. But it will flow freely when it gets in your body. Yeah. That's, that's what's important. You don't want those extra hydrogen atoms. Because um, they're going to clog up. Yeah, they're going to clog up the little tubes. Think about it. I mean, this isn't rocket science. Yeah. yeah. Good 
sources of monounsaturated fats are olive oil, peanut oil, canola oil, avocados, and most nuts, as well as high oleic sa safflower, safflower and sunflower oils. But we read a separate article that says you should avoid safflower oil at all costs. You should avoid all oil at all costs. Yeah. But especially, like they say, the uh, saturated and trans fats. We... The, the oil that has saturated and trans fats. Well, these are... Um, monounsaturated. Right, right. So uh, they're they're the best ones, but you still need to limit your percentage of calories from fats. They don't mention that in the article here. Uh, we're filling in, and all this is in the book too. It live two hundred and fifty. Okay, live two hundred and fifty dot org. Check it out. The discovery that monounsaturated fat could be healthful came from the seven countries study in the nineteen sixties. It revealed that people in Greece and other parts of the Mediterranean region Nick's from Greece. enjoyed a low rate of heart disease despite a high fat diet. Right, but let's think about this. Yes, but Nick is from Greece. Nick is our neighbor at Terra Frutis. Go to our website, aplantbaseddiet.org, click on intentional communities to find out about Terra Frutis. Nick is completely fruitarian. He only eats fleshy fruits. He doesn't even eat nuts or seeds. He doesn't eat greens. And he's Gre he's from Greece, right? Yeah. So yeah. they're making it sound like, oh, the, Gre the Grecians have it all right. You know, they're all doing it right. They know what's going on. They can have this whatever, this oil, right? Special oil. Yeah. But no, it's not true. Anybody who really looks into it, who's, who's from Greece, is not going to do that anymore. The Mediterranean diet being the ultimate healthy diet was a myth that was debunked. The people got healthier because of the amount of vegetables they were eating, despite the oil that they were consuming, Yeah. the, the olive oil. Because vegetables are high in fiber and they absorb some of that oil. So the main fat in True. the diet, though, was not the saturated animal fat common in countries with higher rates of heart disease. It was olive oil, which contains mainly monounsaturated fat. This finding produced a surge of interest in olive oil and the Mediterranean diet, a style of eating regarded as healthful choice today. Although there's no recommended daily intake of monounsaturated fats, the National Academy of Medicine recommends using them as much as possible along with polyunsaturated fats to replace saturated fats and trans fats. I say replace them all. Replace them all? Veggies. <laughs> Polyunsaturated fats. When you pour liquid cooking oil into a pan, there's a good chance you're using polyunsaturated fat. Corn oil, sunflower oil, and safflower oil are common examples. Polyunsaturated fats are essential fats. This means they're required for normal body functions. So you can't, yeah, so you cannot have a diet with zero fat. That's what they're saying there, right? No. Do you know anybody that does? No, all food has fat. <laughs> right, you know how hard you'd have to work to do that? So don't be worried about that. I mean, yeah, your brain will theoretically shut down if you don't have enough fat in your diet. Do we, have you ever heard of anyone that that's ever happened to you though? No. Yeah, it doesn't happen. So your body can't make these fats, so you must get them from food. Polyunsaturated fats are used to build cell mem membranes and covering of nerves. They're needed for blood clotting, muscle movement, and inflammation. I already heard that earlier. <laughs> a polyunsaturated fat has two or more double bonds in its carbon chain. There are two main types of polyunsaturated fats, omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids. The numbers refer to the distance between the beginning of the carbon chain and the first double bond. Both types offer health benefits. Eating polyunsaturated fats in place of saturated fats or highly refined carbohydrates reduces harmful LDL cholesterol and improves the cholesterol profile. It also lowers tri triglycerides. Good sources of omega-3 fatty acids include Fatty fish such as salmon. <laughs> Don't eat any uh -oh. of this stuff. Wait, good source of omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah. Now we know we can do this and address what they're talking about without eating animal products. And yeah. in fact, it's even better. It's and all you have to do is address the balance between omega-6 and omega-3, because omega-6 mm -hmm. is bad, omega-3 is good. Just eat your flax seeds and what is it, chia seeds uh, that we flax eat? Flax seeds, walnuts, canola yeah. oil. And they're saying it here in the article? Unhydrogenated okay. soybean oil. Okay. Foods rich in linoleic acids and other omega-6 fatty acids include vegetable oils such as safflower, soybean, sunflower, walnut, and corn oils. 
so there's a disclaimer. Disclaimer. <laughs> uh, Do not begin any exercise program without first seeking the advice of a medical professional. No content on this site, regardless of date, should ever be used as a substitute for yeah. direct we, medical advice. We have all the stuff on our <laughs> channel too. Yeah, we, we understand. Too. We're not doctors. Is that it? Is that over? That's the end of the article. Okay, so it touched on the important things about fat. I think you get the gist of it. And you got it from a source that's not biased towards plant-based eating. All right, that's the other thing. Because some people think, oh, it's just you crazy cult-like vegans and you can't have this, can't have that or whatever. And it's not the case. Harvard University is saying this and they're definitely not vegan or plant-based. And of course they missed a few things too, which they're not gonna get. No, he's not at this point in time, but they can read my book too. At least they didn't recommend eating meat and dairy. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Did they actually say anything good about animal products in that article? Well, yeah, they said the polyunsaturated fats, so you can get them from fish. Okay. Fish is always, if you go back to like 1990, I guess, fish was the health food, right? That's kind of what I'm remembering anyway about the 90s. But that was, that's back in the 90s. We're in 2022, almost 2023. That's not accurate um, evidence-based anything anymore. Yeah, um, all animal flesh causes inflammation because it's the wrong protein, it's the wrong type of protein. Yeah, and I call it muscle. It's not just the flesh, you're not just eating the skin. You're eating the muscle. You're eating the muscle of an animal. The fish, the chicken, the cow, whatever it is, right? When I bite into your flesh, it's not just skin, yeah. <laughs> it's muscle too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So you can see how Harvard still has a long way to go. And I'm sure we know who's giving them money and what their donors think, because uh, you can kind of read between the lines there. Anyway, let me know if you think this was valuable. Hopefully it was. I got to unzip my jacket because it's getting hot. We're walking uphill. I got my 26 point. This is the only marathon I've ever ran for an actual time, official marathon. I got 343. I think it was back in like 10 years ago. Yeah, it was it was the run of my life. My gosh, like eight, seventeen mile or something like that. Twenty-six point two. So um anyway, get your exercise in. And hopefully this if you ever had any doubts about types of fat and why it's a problem or not a problem, this has put that to rest. Any other questions, let us know in the comments. Check out the book for free, live to 150 at L I V E T O one five zero dot O R G like the video please it helps us out and of course subscribe to the channel if you're not near the other subscriber and share with somebody that could use this information anything else to add nope. while we're going up to the top of the hill here that's it top of the hill bye